Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to imagine going back in time and taking a look at our own solar system, looking at what it may have looked like approximately 3.8 to 3.7 billion years ago. Some planets will actually be quite similar, but some will really surprise you. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Depending on how many videos you've watched on the channel, you may actually already know um, what we're going to talk about. There's a video I made a few years ago where I actually looked at each individual planet as it was uh, several billion years ago. And some planets actually haven't really changed that much. As a matter of fact, for the most part, the gas giants and the ice giants here will still look kind of similar. Maybe slightly different, but not by much. And uh, one of the reasons I picked this specific date is because approximately 3.8 billion years ago was when the period uh, known as late heavy bombardment was about to come to an end. That's a period when there were quite a lot of various uh, leftover rocks left in our solar system that started colliding with pretty much everything in the solar system. Uh, these were the leftovers after the creation of the solar system itself. For gas giants though, as you can probably see, it doesn't really affect them that much in terms of at least visual appearance. A lot of these rocks will um, create a lot of energy when they collide with, for example, Jupiter, but the appearance of the planet itself will not change very much. And so uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus very likely haven't really changed dramatically. But the terrestrial planets did change quite a lot as a matter of fact. Now, for example, Mercury is a good example of seeing what it may have been like, because the craters on Mercury haven't really actually dissipated that much, and so for the most part, it very likely looked something like this. Essentially, it was a lava world, covered with quite a lot of remnants of collisions, and um, was very likely even hotter than it is today, and possibly had some liquid water that evaporated pretty quickly. Now, um, for the most part, that's probably the most sort of exciting time for Mercury because it had quite a lot of active things going on on the surface. And it may have even had a slightly uh, thicker atmosphere because of all of the collisions and all of the stuff that was released because of those collisions. But overall, because Mercury is so small in comparison to other planets and also because it doesn't have much gravity, um, as soon as it cooled down and, and as soon as things started to settle, it essentially evaporated. A lot of the atmosphere disappeared, uh, a lot of water will disappear as well, and pretty much nothing was left except for the actual signs of this really dramatic past that Mercury experienced. Now, the other three planets that we're going to talk about were most likely completely different from what they are today. Let's start with uh, the more obvious one our home planet Earth. So we actually are going to erase this version of Earth and put a completely new Earth that we're also going to terraform, giving it a little bit of atmosphere and uh, more hospitable conditions. And for the most part, this is most likely what Earth looked like back then. We don't really know about the actual continents because it's very difficult to study what happened about 3.8 billion years ago in terms of the actual shape of the continents. But the planet was... Um, barren on the surface and had quite a lot of different bacterial life in the oceans. At some point, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, planet was also purple in color because the bacteria inside the oceans most likely changed the color of water to purple. And later on it also became um, an ice bowl um, for several hundred millions of years, so it was actually completely white. But right after the so-called late heavy bombardment, it's most likely that the Earth will look kind of like this. As a matter of fact, it was a little bit less Earth-like than it is today. Uh, it was probably less hospitable, it most likely had um, very little oxygen on the surface, and if you were to take most of the life from Earth today and try to put it there, most of it would not actually survive. It was not a very hospitable place just yet. The oceans, though, were actually really, really great places to have life kickstart, but also to have life evolve pretty quickly. Now, how about Mars? 
Now today we know that Mars um, actually had a very large ocean as well and it's very likely that in that particular period of time Mars was actually a lot more Earth-like than Earth itself and it's very likely that the atmosphere here was um, pretty thick enough to support liquid water. We actually do see the signs of a very large ocean in, in the region that you see right here and um, we also detect uh, quite a lot of leftover water coming off the actual surface even today. As you know already, uh, we've also discovered water underneath the surface of Mars, so um, this was a very hospitable place, and which is actually why a lot of scientists believe that maybe, just maybe, life also started here, and maybe even transferred to Earth later on. This is the theory known as panspermia, but it hasn't really been proven yet, and um, unfortunately there is no way for us to prove it until we find an asteroid that shows signs of life somewhere out there in space. Now, um, interestingly, Mars um, was probably the most Earth-like planet in the region. As a matter of fact, it was most hospitable to life 3.8 billion years ago, uh, and would actually be a very great planet to live on if it wasn't so uh, small. The lack of gravity here, and also the lack of the actual metal at the core, meant that Mars lost its magnetosphere pretty quickly, and uh, pretty much everything here, water and atmosphere and all of the air slowly escaped, making Mars the dead planet that it is today. At least uh, on the surface. It might actually have life inside, but we haven't really been able to discover uh, anything yet. But we might one day. And lastly, let's talk about Venus. Now, Venus is also an extremely exciting place, and I'm going to try to transform it right now, just so you can actually see what's happening here underneath the cloud layer that's hiding the actual surface. Now, um, it's very difficult for us to estimate how much water uh, Venus actually had, but we're almost certain that Venus too was a very Earth-like planet. And let's try to change it right now uh, by putting just the right amount of water here and giving it just the right amount of atmosphere. So this is very likely what Venus may have actually looked like. Just like Mars, it most likely had quite a lot of liquid water on the surface. It also possibly had um, enough sort of temperature and atmosphere to support not just liquid water, but actual life. And for all we know, just like Mars, it may have had some kind of life. But because of the very slow rotation of Venus, and because it didn't really have a very active geologically speaking surface. In other words, um, it didn't really have any plate tectonics or a way for it to continuously fix uh, carbon dioxide and keep it inside the actual planet and at the same time circulate any kind of excess of CO2. Eventually, all of the CO2 started to actually come out. And we think that uh, Venus, just like Earth, experienced quite a lot of uh, volcanic eruptions that ended up releasing so much CO2 over time that was never actually fixed into the soil again, creating the Venus that we know today. So over time, it basically started to acquire more and more atmosphere and eventually had so much that water evaporated, the entire planet got really, really hot and became what it is today. It became this dry, super hot world filled with CO2 that was released uh, from inside the surface. Now, um, Venus is actually an excellent lesson for us as well, because Earth, turns out, has way more CO2 than Venus did. And so if one day Earth actually loses its ability to fix CO2 and to keep it inside the soil, and if one day CO2 starts coming out to the surface as well, Earth is actually going to become even worse than Venus. It's going to become so hot that it's probably going to be glowing kind of like this. And so, in a sense, Venus is actually quite a good warning for us because it does show us what happens when CO2 um, goes out of control and creates this tremendously hard, hot and tremendously inhospitable object. Now, for the most part, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to explore the idea of early solar system and show you what all of these terrestrial planets used to be like about 3.8 to 3.7 billion years ago. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about the history of the solar system and you know what all of these planets were like before. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who wants to learn more about space and sciences through simulations and video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And, well, 
See you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.